I didn't. I had a terrible negative attitude. I literally, dude, I used to wear a shirt that said negative attitudes. Like that's how negative I was that I was like, this is going to be my persona. I'm going to be a negative person. It was like, looking back, I think I was just trying to cope with how angry I felt. And I was like, what if I just lean into it? Uh, which was not healthy for me. Um, I think actually trying to be positive. Uh, I thought that that would start in my first year of treatment and then year two, three, four, five, all these years go by and I'm still not positive. And I think I had a girlfriend years ago, early twenties. And um, she gave me this book and it was kind of like, um, you know, imagine you have a girlfriend and she like gets you mouthwash and you're like, what are you trying to say? Oh, God. Like, do I have stinky breath or whatever? My girlfriend at the time bought me this book called Success Through a Positive Mental Attitude. I think that's what the book is called. And I was like, what are you trying to say? That I'm negative? That I don't think positively? And she's like, yeah, kind of. Like, you're a pretty negative person. And I think this book could help you. So I was leaving for tour that day when she gave it to me. And I was like, you're such a jerk. I'm going to put it in my backpack, but I won't read it. And then, you know, day one on tour, I've already read a couple chapters and I couldn't put it down. I was like, oh man, I didn't even know that I had the ability to try to think positively. So that was definitely a big catalyst for me. I need to thank her. I need to reach out wherever she is. If you're listening to this right now, thank you for getting me that book. So it almost in a way, she was kind of a person that wanted to help in a way, but didn't know how to do it. So she gave you that book to kind of maybe see you can do it on your own yeah i think most people want to help other people but don't know how to do it i think that everyone listening to this right now has friends who are struggling with something and they don't say anything they don't bring it up they don't reach out they don't invite them to something they don't ask them what's going on and it's because we're freaking clueless we've spent our whole lives not talking about mental and emotional health and then when someone we see is struggling we go oh I'm so ill-equipped to handle this because I've learned never to talk about it, you know? Yeah. I think if I was, I've had those kind of moments where I've had mental health stuff, but I would be fine with someone reaching out to me and asking and letting me tell them what's going on. And then yeah. th just to have that kind of talk and interaction in a way, because I, you know that those friends are your real friends if they're going to reach out and try to help. They may not have the answers yeah. how to, but they're at least trying in a way. Yeah. I also, I have friends who will say like, hey, you know, one of my family members threatened to harm themselves and I don't know if I should call the police or call a crisis center or whatever. And I was like, duh. A hundred percent. If you have, if someone in your life is in serious danger, you call. And what people always say is, what if they're mad at me for it? And it's like, would you rather have a friend that's alive and mad at you? Yeah. Or a friend who's not alive, but you were in their good graces. Like it, it has to cross this threshold where it stops becoming about you and how comfortable you are. And it starts becoming about your friend and their health. So when you were pursuing education in college, what was that path that you were going for? Well, I told my parents that I wasn't going to go to school because I wanted to be a rock star. And they said, that's not a thing. Go to college. You have a scholarship. I had a full ride scholarship um, through the IB program. Mm -hmm. And so I went to UCF in Central Florida for psychology begrudgingly because I was, I was interested in psychology um, and I thought if I get a real job, I would like it to be in psychology because I want to serve in the mental health realm. I want to help people who feel like me. Um, but in the back of my head, I was like, you know, I'm only here because my band isn't touring at this exact moment. And then my band got signed while I was in college. And I remember this specifically. Um, I met with my academic advisor at UCF. And he said, what's your plan for next semester? And I said, I'm going to get signed to a label and tour. So I won't even be here. And he's like, can you please pick something? That's not how this works. And then 
my band got signed and I moved out. I, I moved out of UCF and I remember going to my <laughs> going to my academic advisor's office and being like, no, I'm not kidding. Like it actually happened. But I finished my degree on tour. So I did go to school for psych and I just didn't think that I was actually going to put my degree to good use until way later in my life. Like I thought I was going to be touring for 20, 30 years. And then when I'm too old to tour, I can put my psych degree to work. And now it's really coming in handy. <laughs> how did you meet like your bandmates or how did your band come like, together? Well, I knew, so I'd been going to concerts like crazy and I was trying to find bands that needed members, but pretty much, I mean, if a band is at a show performing, then they have members, duh. So it's like not a good place to find bands that need members, but I just kept asking every band there. Like, if you know a band that needs a member, please let me know. And a few mutual friends made a connection with this one band and I went and tried out and I was terrible. My voice was so bad. And they said, okay, seems fine. And let me join. Um, and I didn't know any of them. It was like a bunch of strangers. And then I was like, okay, I'm in your band now. I didn't vet you guys as people. Like I don't have any pre-existing relationship with you and they didn't know me. So we definitely took a big chance on each other. I love it. Like if someone's listening to this on audio and they're not seeing the video form how you're holding the microphone if we didn't know that you were a musician I think you can definitely tell you're a musician just how you're holding the microphone <laughs> and everything it's like the, there's a show that was on tv I can see your voice and they're like trying to figure out who can actually sing and they're all saying how they're holding the microphone and everything I'm just picturing that game right now dang dude I actually focus a lot when I tour um I focus a lot on mic placement like when I see a really, so I'm kind of a nerd with technical stuff. And when I see a vocalist absolutely nail a vocal take, the first thing I'll say afterwards is like, wow, look at her mic placement. Look at the way she's holding her microphone. Look, and it's these little tiny subtle differences, like a one or two degree angle shift mm -hmm. changes the way your voice passes over. It's like, I don't mean to get off on a tangent, but it was cool to hear you say because I really nerd out about that stuff. 